Good morning friends, I welcome you all in this session. As you are aware in previous session we were discussing about risk management and let me quickly go through what we did in previous session. As I said risk is basically an event which negatively affects your project. Now being a project manager you should know what are different possible risks which could hamper your project and then you should come up with appropriate risk management plan, right. I have also said that you need to plan your project properly because this is one of the points which differentiates between successful projects and unsuccessful projects. I have also talked about risk management, risk management is basically an art as well as science. Why it is an art? because there are several stakeholders involved in a project and you need to coordinate with all the stakeholders, you need to keep talking with all the stakeholders, you need to keep uh, trying to know what are the requirements of different stakeholders. So, if you are in talking terms, if you are in, if you are coordinating with stakeholders properly, then most of the risks you can easily identify, right and you can have a better planning of management of those risks, right. And it is science also, why it is science? Because uh, to, to avert risk, you need to apply different risk management tools. So, those tools are nothing but scientific tools. So, you need to identify risks, you need to analyze risks and you need to respond to those risks. This is what we have seen in previous class, you need to find out what is the probability of occurrence of an event which would be negatively affecting your project and what would be the impact of that risk on your project. So, project risk is probability of event and consequences of event, right. This is what we have seen in previous session also. So, there are four stages of risk management, identify risk, analyze probability and consequences, risk management strategies and control and documentation. These are different types of risks we have already seen. How to identify risk? Most important point. So, you can go for brainstorming session or for expert opinion or Delphi method or on the basis of past data also you can identify what are different types of risks. As I said, you can have several sources for one risk and one source for several risks, right. So, you can identify different factors either by reviewing previous documents, sensitivity analysis, assumption analysis, decision tree analysis, simulation and diagrammatic techniques, right. You should also come up with work breakdown structure, similar to work breakdown structure, you should come up with risk breakdown structure, ok. Let us look at the second part in risk management process, the first one was risk identification, the second is risk management assessment. So, how to assess a risk? Now, risk management can be assessed through a matrix like this. This is a 2 by 2 matrix where on x axis you have got consequences of risk and on y axis what is the probability of occurrence of risk. So, let us say this quarter you have got low likelihood of risk happening and consequences are also low. If you look at this quadrant, the probability of happening of a particular risk is this and consequences are also very high, right. So, you can have 4 quadrant, it is not necessarily that you should have 4 quadrants also only, you can have 9 quadrants also, you can have a 3 by 3 matrix also. So, rather than having low low and high you can have a moderate also, right. So, 
in that case you will have a 9, 9 cells right or 9 quadrants right. So, let, uh, let us take an example of this quadrant where probability of risk is very high this one probability of risk is very high and consequences are very high right. I will give you an example. Let us say uh, you want to buy uh, a, a, a machine tool from abroad and uh, that machine tool is very expensive. So, to get that machine first of all what you will have to do you will have to let us say go for uh, international uh, tendering process or tendering process at international level. So, you would be inviting bids from several international companies right who would be making those uh, those particular types of machines right. So, after uh, analyzing those tenders looking at their terms and conditions looking at price looking at delivery time looking at credit period uh, looking at uh, the logistics facilities which those companies may provide. Let us say you have selected one particular foreign company right and in this entire process let us say you have also hired a consultant uh, who would be you know screening all those tenders which you have received and the consultant has given you a suggestion that you should go for this particular company to get a machine tool right. Now, once you have ordered the machine and let us say you are supposed to receive it after 6 months. Once uh, you place the order, once promise is given by the company that uh, they would be some supplying that machine to you within 6 months, but suppose if they do not supply. Now, there, there could be several reasons for non-availability of that machine. There is a problem at suppliers and there may be problems at let us say uh, airport, uh, there, there, there may be some clearance problems, there may be let us say problem of middlemen because uh, there the middlemen and middlemen uh, there are there is there would be several agencies in between two parties yourself and the supplier of the machine. For example, you will have an insurance company, you will have bankers. So, there might be a problem of exchange rate is not it. So, because of some or the other reasons if you do not get machine in time then consequences would be very high right. So, this is the situation for this particular quadrant right. Let us look at this particular situation where probability of event occurring is very low, but consequences are very high. FDI policy, policy is an example of this. As you are aware, uh, ours is now an open economy. There are several foreign countries who have invested in our country, there are several MNCs working in our country and government of India has allowed that to happen right. So, and, and these policies are still continuing. In, in spite of several changes in, in central government level, still these policies are there. Let us say what is the probability of change in those policies? It is very low, but suppose if that happens then impact would be very high because what will happen to those MNCs who have invested in India heavily right. So, this is the situation ok. Let us look at example of this particular quadrant. The probability of occurrence of an event is very low and consequences also very low right. You can think of any example for this particular quadrant. 
I'll, 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 I will also give you an example. Let us say uh, the probability that a fan which is let us say 20 feet away from me, what is the probability that fan will fall? For that you need to go for uh, past data. For example, how many times that fan fell down in last let us say 10 years or 5 years or 1 year, right? On the basis of that I can find out what would be the probability of falling of that fan. So, that is very low probability and what would be the consequences because there is no, no one there under that fan, so nothing there would not be much effect of it, right? there would not be much impact of that event. right? So, low and low. right? So, similarly you can think of a situation like this. Okay? So, I am not explaining this example, you just think yourself and try to come up with an example. right? So, this is risk management analysis. So, you need to identify the probability of event if it is high or if it is low then what would be the consequences. right? Let us take another example, let us say there is a firm which is developing new software for retail market. Now, the, so the, the, the software can fail in these conditions, there are three conditions. The first is maturity of the software, how mature that software is. So, is that software is, is a completely new software or based on existing software platform, right? So, how sophisticated that software is, right? So, low uh, least, uh, least sophisticated and most sophisticated, right? You can have two extreme ends, right? Complexity of the product. Now, is the design relatively simple or it is highly complex in structure? So, the design of the software is simple or complex, right? Again, two possibilities, two extreme possibilities. The third one is dependency. Can the product be developed independently on any system currently in place in the company or it is, or, or it is slave of current operating system, right? So, uh, whether the software depends on current operating system or some other operating system, right? So, these are three possibilities of failures of a particular software, right? Which a, which, which a company is developing, right? Now, since these are different uh, types of failures, you need to know probabilities of these failures and then what are the consequences of these failures. right? So, let us look at what are the possible consequences. So, under the consequences of failures, we are concerned with the, the effect of those failures right? and those effects could be on cost. Cost may either increase or may decrease, right? we do not know. Right? Let us say if, if software is matured one, right? then definitely cost would increase, right? is not it? Let us say if product is complex, then cost will increase. Similarly, if let us say uh, software is mature, then it would be a reliable software. right? Similarly, performance would also be very high if software is mature, but cost would also be very high. right? So, we have to look at what is the effect of maturity of software on all these four. right? Similarly, effect of complexity of product on all these four. right? Similarly, dependency will also affect these four, right? these four. right? So, now you need to come up with a matrix wherein you need to give probability of failures. right? So, let us say as I said maturity can be you know uh, 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 least 
maturity and most maturity right or so existing software probability of failure is 0.1 minor design probability of failure 0.3 major changes probability of failure this technology is available but complex design probability of failure this state of the art some research complete right so sophisticated software right probability is 0.9 now all these match when i say existing software its probability is 0.1 all these will affect what cost schedule reliability and performance minor design will affect all those four points right similarly so on right so what what would be the type of matrix you are coming up with so for one failure this this would be affecting cost schedule reliability and performance this would be affecting four right so this is 5 into 4 20 then again 5 into 4 20 5 into 4 20 right so total 60 right but rather than going for such a detailed matrix we can have we can prepare a very simple matrix right okay but before preparation of that matrix let us look at consequences of failure let's say as i said cost may increase or cost may come down right so budget estimated not exceeds its probability is 0.1 cost estimate exceeds budget by less than 5% its probability is 0.3 by more than 30% its probability is 0.7 but cost estimate exceeds budget by more than 50% its probability is 0.9 right so these are consequences of failures for cost right similarly for you you can have for schedule for reliability and for performance right so let us take a very simple example right and after that we will find out risk factor so there is we will we will be calculating project risk score and on the basis of that we will decide whether the project is is is, is a riskier project or not right so you can again def, uh, divide risks into different categories low risk medium risk and high risk right so let us find out score right so first of all identify factors and assess the probability and probability of failure and probability of consequences right so it's pf and cf right so this is for probability and this for c is for consequences right calculate overall probability and consequences so pf is equal to summation of all pi's divided by n cf is equal to summation of all ci's divided by m and then calculate overall risk factor by just adding these two and subtracting it by multiplication of these two right so this is how you can find out risk factor hope this point is clear right so risk factor is probability of failure consequences of failure minus multiplication of probability of failure and consequence of failures right so i have taken a very simple example so for the time being you just forget these values right forget these values and these values also right so probability of failure maturity if it is low then let's say probability is 0.1 if it is major let's say 0.9 right probability of failure for let's say dependency it is low 0.13 dependency is very high it's 0.9 right similarly you can assign other probabilities also right similarly consequences of failures what are the different probabilities of consequences of failures so for cost if it is if it is low then it is 0.11 0.95 if it is very high right so you can have again these probabilities 
in fact you can change uh, you can replace this cost with this cost also let us say probability of let us say consequences of failure probability is low and that probability is 0.11 even if you replace it with 0.95 then also there would not be any change in your answer right. So, after assigning probabilities of failures in this matrix you just take the average of all these three values. So, average is 0.12 similarly average for second row 0 0.25, 0 0.45, 0 0.72 and 0.92 right. So, these are averages of all these five rows and similarly this column is nothing but average of all these four uh, four values right first second third and fourth right so this column gives you average of these five rows right these five rows 1 2 3 4 and 5 right now what after that once you are done with calculation of average take the average of all these averages so 0 0.12 0 0.25 0 0.45 0 0.70 0 0.92 and average is 0 0.48 right similarly for consequences 0 0.15 0 0.27 0 0.48 0 0.69 0 0.92 and average is 0.5 so even if you replace fifth row with first row your average will remain same right so now let us calculate risk score right so rf is risk factor so, probability of failure is 0 0.48 right, probability of consequences 0 0.50 right minus multiplication of these two. So, this value is 0 0.74 and we have initially said that if the risk factor is less than 0 0.3 we will we'll say it is a low risk project if the risk factor is between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 we will say it is a medium risk project if it is more than 0 0.7 then we will say it is a high risk project. So, as far as this particular project for which I have arbitrarily assigned probability of failures and consequences this value is 0 0.74 so it is a high risk project right. So, in this way you can assign probabilities now who will assign these probabilities this is this is basically important point right who will assign these probabilities so you need to again talk to experts experts will tell you that if maturity is very high then what would be the effect of that high maturity on cost so that probability you will have to talk to experts or group of people you can talk to right after getting probabilities then you can easily calculate risk factor right. So, this is this was the second point right analysis of risk first point was what are, what are, there are four points in uh, risk management process the first one was identification of risk second we have just seen analysis of risk and let us look at third point which is risk mitigation how to mitigate risk now there is a risk available in front of you what to do now Mo very important point. Now if the risk is minor then accept it right because if risk is minor there would not be much of consequences of it right so accept it if it is very minor risk if you do not want to accept it then minimize risk right I will give you an example let us say Boeing company has got millions of parts and they have got thousands of vendors and if something goes wrong in one of the parts of the Boeing then what would be the risk you can think of right lots of lives lost and lots of money lost right. So, it is the responsibility of Boeing company to minimize this risk 
and how they minimize this? Boeing sends their engineers, their designers, their quality inspectors to the plants of different vendors, right. So, they are ensuring that vendors provide them right quality materials. Similarly, their vendors also visit their vendors, right. So, vendors would be visiting their vendors, right and so on, right. So, this is how you can minimize risk in your project. The next strategy could be sharing of risk. You can share your risk with someone else also, right. So, can you tell me any example of sharing of risk? There is a risk on your project, but you are sharing it with, with someone else, right. So, I hope that by this time you would have come up with one or two examples on sharing of risk. Okay. Let me also give you couple of examples, right. So, risk may be allocated proportionality among multiple members of the project. For example, European space agencies, as you are aware that uh, in Europe there are several countries and uh, they have got a common space agency through which they are, they are launching their satellites. So, if something wrong happens with the satellite, then the, the cost would be borne by participating countries, right. And uh, uh, it would be in different proportional, right. It is not that uh, the cost would be shared equally, right. So, so it is it is similar to the, the benefits would also be shared in proportional manner, right. So, cost and benefits would be shared in proportional manner, right. Another example is of this boot, right. It is a new concept. It is let us say uh, I want to uh, construct or uh, let us say government want to uh, wants to construct a project from let us say Delhi to Rudki, right. So, uh, they can give contract to a contractor who would build it, he will own it he would operate it and then he would transfer it to government, right. So, this is another example of sharing of risk, right. So, risk would be shared by government as well as by contractor, right. Now, once you are done with sharing of risk, the next strategy could be transfer of risk, right. So, either you accept it or you minimize it or you share it or you transfer it, right. So, how to transfer a risk? Insurance, insurance is, is very good example of transfer of risk. So, if, the, if, if there is a risk on your life, you just take life insurance policy, now the risk would be with insurance company, right. So, this is another example of, uh, this is one of the examples of insur, uh, transfer of risk, right. I will give you one more example. Let us say I want to buy a flat in, in a building, right and I have given money to builder and he promised me to deliver uh, flat by let us say, let us say within one year's time, right. If he does not do in one year's time, then what? Who would bear that risk? Now, there should be an agreement between builder and yourself that if you do not supply flat within stipulated time, then 6 months after stipulated time, we both of us will bear half of the cost which is going to increase, right. After 9 months, my risk would be 0 and it is it would be entirely your risk, right. So, in this way you can have sharing of uh, the, the transfer of risk, right. 
So, fixed price for uh, the project up front and if over overruns builder will be a right. So, this can be another example of transfer of risk. So, with this let me stop here, uh, we will start the remaining point of risk management in next session. Thank you very much.